We're going to be talking about a couple more of the provinces today. But before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about some of the naming conventions I developed. I like to have rules. I'm kind of like a border collie. I need to run around and make order out of chaos. So one of the things I did as I was developing this world is to give some sort of convention, some sort of rule for the place names, for features of the landscape and things like that. One of the naming conventions that you'll see on the map is the U before an N and U before an L. For instance, in Sun Kasal, it's S-U with an umlau and kasal. And yet when we have dar usul, it's D-A-R dash A, uh, yeah, A-C-U-L, but the U has a carrot over that. Well, how did I figure that out? I kind of arbitrarily developed a rule that if the U comes before an N, it gets a little umlau. If the U comes before an L, it gets the carrot. Now, heaven help us if I have the U coming bo before some other consonant. I don't know. We'll figure something out. But for now, that's kind of how I've developed that. Um, one of the other things that I do is dar, D-A-R, is the Kandaran word for mountain. So all the mountain ranges are dar something, like dar anard, D-A-R dash A-N-A-R. Um, I've also given a convention to rivers. They all end in A-T-H, like the major river you can think of Nile or Mississippi running through Kindera is the Anarath. So everything ends in T-H, the Anarath, the Garnath, the Breath. Um, they all end in A-T-H. And another little thing that is a kind of a, an homage to, to Star Wars, if I have an A before an R, I've doubled that A. Now that seems to only occur in the province of Kinderan. I was trying to convey some sort of um, accent, some sort of local patois, if you will. So that's where we get Carl becomes, instead of K-A-R-L, becomes K-A-A-R-L. And Mark is, instead of M-A-R-K, is M-A-A-R-K. It's kind of me giving a nod to Alderaan. When I was a kid and I saw Alderaan with the two A's at the end, I just thought that was the most exotic thing I had ever seen before. I thought that was kind of cool. So I've kind of incorporated it. The whole point in much of the languages is in, in Kindera is it's supposed to feel almost familiar to you. Um, a lot of what I've done is based on Latin. Um, so it should feel like I almost know this. I can almost understand this without having something translated. And so it was a way to take commonplace names and make them a little bit more exotic. All right, so let's talk about some provinces. Today we're going to talk about Tashamar, Kana Akun, and Varn Adal. Tashamar is the fourth province that was established, the fourth learning hall, and it is my Morocco province. It's all desert and sand, reminds you very much of Kasbah, of Princess Jasmine and Aladdin. Um, it's that kind of thing. So, you know, the buildings are square and whitewashed. There's lots of tile, exotic spices. Um, it's a very bustling trade center. That's what its claim to fame is, is, is really in, in in trade and at the time I was developing the land I thought it was so unique to have a deserty province. It has nothing to do with Tatooine although we all know my love of Star Wars um, but at that time it was always kind of medieval forests and Sherwood and those kinds of things so to have kind of sword and sorcery in a desert landscape was was really kind of cool and unique for me and so I again I wanted to create a vibrant world that has a variety of climate zones and a variety of people and races and accents as a very organic living breathing world or land anyway. Um, it's located in the south of the land and it borders the ocean so it makes sense that it would have a major port and uh, uh, goods from all over the, the country would be coming in and out of there and then trade caravans go on throughout the rest of um, the continent. Even though it's the fourth hall overall, it really represents the growing trend in the land back in these this kind of early days in, in Kindera of halls being established, 
back again in the provinces, bringing, uh, uh, decentralizing the development of the Kinar. And remember, we talked about last time that uh, Rune Tehran in the way south, they said they were too far away from Darren to keep sending all their kids up north to be trained and then have everybody come back. This is the second one of those halls, really, that is developed because they want to keep their Falkeen local, um, as they should, and kind of home grow them, kind of nurture them more in the particular needs of that province. So this is another part of that growing trend. Our next call, hall is Kana'akun, the fifth province. And Kana'akun is in the north central part of the land. It's forested. It's all forested. I want you to think Germany's black forest really is what I had in my mindset. Also Oregon or Washington State without all the rain. It's, it's kind of more temperate than that. It isn't quite so rainy. But it's it's very thick conifer forest, not broadleaf like, oh, God, there's a little bit in there. Most forests do. But it's mostly um, coniferous forests. Um, obviously, that's their major uh, export is, is, is timber, lumber, um, and, and wood to build things. Ship spars are very important from Kana Akun. Um, it has one of the smaller populations of Falkeen. I think I have like 500 aspected to maybe uh, half a million unaspected. Um, most uh, uh, habitations are small little uh, uh, wood chopper communities and forester communities. Um, although, again, the uh, major city, capital city in this particular province is Volunteer, and most of the population lives on or near there. Um, this is an important hall. It was one of the first halls, it was the first hall to be created, established specifically to hold back the Kinar. This is a major turning point in the war, in the schism, the breakup of the philosophies that led to the Kinar and the Falkeen. So this is the first hall to be established specifically to do that and to prevent Kinar marauders from working their way south and attacking the more richer lands from the south. Um, the schism in that really broke away between the two philosophies occurred in like 1401 in my time frame and the events the current day if you will uh trine rising is in 3367 so some 2000 years prior to where our stories are going to take place our third hall that we're going to talk about today is varn erdal province it's the sixth hall uh, yeah hall to be established and it is again kind of in the north uh, northwest and it is grasslands rolling hills and grasslands a bit drier i want you to think of the dakotas or the prairie provinces of canada so there's these tall grasslands that grow wheat um it can be very hot in the summer, very hot and dry, so wildfires are a concern. In the winter, it's bitterly cold with lots of blizzards. Um, so you have to be very hardy to survive in Varnerdal. And their big claim to fame is their war horses. They breed the most prized war horses in the continent of Kandera. Other uh, other provinces can add to their breeds as well. You kind of think of the sleek, built for speed Arabian horse. Well, that kind of horse would come from Tashamar. Um, but if you want somebody, some some uh, horse that's durable, that has incredible endurance and will stand up to harsh conditions and keep plugging away, you want a horse that's been bred from Varn or Dahl. It has, uh, Barnard also has one of the smallest cohorts of Falking in the land. At the current time, the 3367, like in the open of the books, um, there's only about 300. And that's because they have been constantly attacked by the Kanar. Between them and Kana Akun, they're kind of like the the vanguard of the Falkeen forces driving to the south. So every time the Kanar seem to come down from the north, they're going to run into the Varn or Dalans and it's going to beat them back. They are vicious, vicious warriors. 
but that constant, unrelenting warfare over millennia has winnowed them down, and there's only handfuls left, which becomes a major concern as these stories in the trilogy and the subsequent books, even beyond the trilogy, um, progress. So I think that's where we'll leave it today. I want to wish you much light, or as we say in Kinder, Kim Isi Oye. Thank you.